Hey guys, so we are going to cover programming, of course, that'll be at the end, and then I'm starting to do some interviews, trying to get that going for this podcast, and someone said, well, why don't you interview yourself first, tell us your story, and I thought, uh, duh, I guess that's a good one, I really hadn't even thought of that, that some people, I don't know, you just, you know, you do your job, and you do your work, and you assume everybody knows everything you know, and they don't, so I will cover that this time around, and um, of course, go through a few announcements. All right, so a couple things about the gym that are going on. Today is the 17th. Let me pull that up. And I'm doing this uh, recording for to be posted. I think it's going to post on the 24th, not think. It is. And it'll cover programming on the 27th. So it's kind of weird. I'm doing these early and the projection is early. So sometimes I change the programming just based on how people are feeling and you know, if I messed up and it didn't look right, I don't know, whatever, right? Trying to dial into what is perfect programming. Um, anyway, so right now, today, it's 10 a.m. and we're about to do the first CrossFit workout. Uh, sorry, the first open workout. I'm going to be at the gym at four o'clock helping people do muscle ups. I'm planning on videotaping some of that and then videotaping our event. Not videotape because that doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to use my cell phone, which isn't really a cell phone anymore, it's a device. And on that device, I'm going to record via elect electronics to um, make some more video for you guys. But I'm also going to do some interviewing, so we'll see that. Anyway, so by the time this comes out, it should be Friday the 24th. We'll have the first workout under our belt. We'll know what the second workout is. We'll be kind of coming back to do the same sort of thing. So the program will cover the week of the third, but we may adjust it based on what we saw on the 24th, etc. Right? Okay, just keep that in mind. So the intent is to have a lot of fun. The open is for us a chance to get together, maybe some morning people, meet the evening people, for us to work out in an a, uh, uh, event-like scenario. So just come, have a good time. It doesn't really matter what you score. Yeah, we'll be a little bit more stricter on range of motion, but if you're doing scaled, whatever, just get out there and have fun, man. Um, things that are coming. We will have CrossFit Bingo coming out soon. Basically, there's a couple things that you get to do, and when you do those, you can create the bingo map, and whoever gets bingo first gets a prize, and second gets a prize, etc. So it's just mostly for fun. And then we have Summer Strength coming at you guys. I think an email just went out. So Summer Strength is typically for middle schoolers and high schoolers, um, and we teach them how to lift as well as introduce them into CrossFit. So if they don't play any sports, that's totally fine. If they do play sports, uh, I several, I think Salar is a wrestler. I, you know, I wrestle. There's a couple of other wrestlers who have said, I really wish I would have had this in the off season because it would have been awesome. And that, it's true. So teaching them how to use their body correctly and then use it inside of sports is, I mean, that's kind of what we do. CrossFit's uh, the pinnacle of the CrossFit pyramid. Actually, let me go grab that, is sport. I think I've mentioned this before, but I love that CrossFit. So we, we roll right in this middle section, but they tell you the base of what you should be doing is nutrition. And, and below that would be really be rest and stress. So rest and stress, nutrition, that's where you should start. So in any program that says the best thing you can possibly do is to buy my program is probably lying to you. Uh, it's never the best thing. Take my pill, really just eat real food, right? So CrossFit tells you the best thing you could do is work on your stress and your rest and then your nutrition and then come in here and do this other stuff. And even at the top, they're like, we're not even the pinnacle of it all. We just help you get to a place where you can do sport. So sport is the pinnacle of what they do. Anyway, so we've got summer strength coming at you and that is um, for sport. Help kids learn how to lift. If you've got a middle or a high schooler, they're always welcome to do the normal path and get into CrossFit with us. If you've got a middle schooler, then um, they need to do summer strength first or a whole lot of uh, on-ramp. Um, summer strength is basically a very elongated on-ramp, and then we will let them come into uh, regular classes because we're, we are an adult gym, so we want to service that our customers first. Um, but in the summer, we will have middle school and high school summer strength. And then also Coach Jamie is uh, creating um, a youth or even more like elementary school and younger program to help those kids get into these movements and have a healthier mindset. So that's coming your way. Other thing, I am doing interviews. Like, as I mentioned, I got a couple guys, uh, a couple of y'all have said yes to it. Let me see if I can, well, I won't read the name. Well, sure. Why not read the name? So I got Rebecca, Meredith, Natalie, David, Aaron, Pete, Ebony, Kelly, Shana, and Tim have already said, sure, I'll give it a shot. So right now I'm trying to try to figure it out. So it may not go well, but <laughs> thank you for being my guinea pigs and <clears throat> doing it like this, where I'm doing right now, just speaking into a microphone and have my screen up. That's pretty easy. Uh, Levi showed me what I needed to do and 
here we are. Okay, so there you go. About me and how I got into CrossFit and where we are right now. So CrossFit has changed over the years and my desires inside of CrossFit has changed over the years. I think I said it in another episode that the pursuit of the games is actually unhealthy. And what I mean by that is, yeah, yeah, I get it. Those people are, look pretty fit and healthy. I'm just saying it's unsustainable. It's like doing a super calorie deficient diet. It's not healthy and it's not sustainable. Yeah, you get some interesting results, but you're going to be left somewhere, you know, in both cases, probably with scars. So we did a lot of crazy stuff like t today's open workout has muscle ups. Yes, I can do muscle ups. Do we really teach people to do muscle ups? Eh, not, not too much. Mostly because it's a super complicated movement, and while it is really cool looking, um, not many people can get there. There's a coordination, a weight, and a strength issue that all need to come together, and so you're left with very few people who can do it. I'd rather teach people pull-ups, um, but anyway, so we would do a lot of things that, I mean, we were doing ring handstand push-ups. What dumb... Why would you do that? I don't know. That's a great way to break your neck. Anyway, so we have shifted and changed, and you can't really see this right here, but I wanted to read it. So our mission is to help you reach uh, your goals. We aim to coach you to become the hero of your own story through mentoring and health and fitness of your body, heart, and mind. We utilize proven methods, personal training, CrossFit, nutrition, goal setting, and more to help propel you towards success. So we want you to be the hero of your own story. Come to us for a while, learn everything you can, and leave. That's totally fine. We want you to be the hero of your own story. Um, our vision, you can, well, you can barely read it over there, but it's to inspire you guys to success. So I think before it would have been like, hey, our mission is to compete and have like crazy times. <laughs> Now, I mean, it's right there, right? We are happy, humble, helpful people that want to be healthy and fit now, as well as in our 90s. And that's our goal. If if you look at that and say, yes, that is me, then yeah, you're on the right track. If that's not you, then I don't know, we may not be the best place for you. But <clears throat> even on our Get Started, if you're on our website, and you're looking at our Get Started page, um, we changed the questions. So basically, it's happy, humble, helpful, right? So are, do you, are you that type of person? Are you interested in coaching, mentoring, and accountability? Because you guys know we do a lot of that. And do you want to become the hero of your own story? So you don't want a crutch. You want to do it. That's who we want to work with. We turn a lot of people away, weirdly, right? They're like, hey, I just want massive discounts. Like, yeah, we don't do that because we have a high-touch service, so we can't do that. Um, plus, it it allows a ton of people in and then I cannot coach and work with the people are here that are paying. So we have chosen to not do low dollar service because it dilutes what we can offer and takes our mind share off of you, the members who are here and paying for service, right? So we don't do that. We've also had people come in and say, I want to make it to the games. And I tell them, hey, uh, uh, Brandon Phillips, CrossFit Bound, just south of us, or Travis Mayer, CrossFit, CrossFit Passion, just to the east of us. Go to one of those gyms. They've actually gone to the games. You should go talk to them. We don't do games, people. Or we had people say, we just want open gym. I just want to come in and do my own thing. I'm like, that's not really us. If you want, I can give you some programming and you could do that at Lifetime. So anyway... If you're listening to this and you're not a member, which I did have somebody who just showed up and said, hey, I heard the podcast. I thought I'd come in and say hi. This is who we are. Happy, humble, helpful people who want to be healthy and fit now as well as in our 90s. And we're just normal people. I, I call it David Desk Jockeys and, um, uh, you know, that type. Anyway, so, um, all right, moving along. The, the next thing, actually, before we get kind of, I, I guess, into my story, I did want to mention this. If you are interested in paying and trying something out with me, uh, paying in Bitcoin or in crypto, well, Bitcoin, I don't take other cryptocurrency. Um, there is an app called Strike with a K and um, we have got an account there and I'm trying to figure out how to use it. So if you're interested in something, let me know. I also use a cash app. So a cash app also does cryptocurrencies. So I've been trying to mess with it in there. Um, anyway, if you're interested, uh, and you have those two services or you'd like to try it, let me know. I'm happy to give it a shot. Okay, back on to me. So um, we moved around a whole lot growing up, but I eventually landed at Parkview High School over in Lilburn, Georgia, where I got introduced into wrestling and pole vaulting. I was a AP taking class type of guy that also participated in varsity sports and played Dungeons and Dragons, as well as 
you know, chaste girls. So I was a mixture of so many things that I never fit in anywhere. I, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny now to have kids and see them go through this. I'm like, ah, I see why I struggled with (laughs) just deep relationship. My, 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 I was so, um, I don't know, spiked at all those places. So classes, AP, wrestling, you know, varsity, it, it, it was, I did, I was all in the things I did. And there was very few people who were all in and the things they did. So it was hard to really dive in deep. Anyway, so uh, I did get my kids into wrestling. Here's, I think this is Evan at a wrestling match. And uh, I did, we did River Ridge Junior. Evan just got taken down. Sorry, Evan. Anyway. Just watching that brings back sweats and and the desire. To, I mean, just all of it comes screaming back. It's crazy. If you've wrestled, you know. Um, I eventually found pole vaulting, and here's a guy hitting a jump. Speaking of world records, Duplantis. He's going up is and over. On? Oh man, that's oh, beautiful. That's ridiculous. It was that ridiculous. is absolutely. I was not like that at all. I was the the kid that would uh, miss the mat and stuff, but. <laughs> That's what I did through high school, and um, I did a little bit at college. I went to Georgia Tech, got a double E degree, electrical engineering, met my wife, and um, funny story there, uh, <clears throat> we met at a football game, and I hate sports, and so does she, so that was kind of funny. I was like, hey, you want an ice cream? And we went off and bought some ice cream and just hung out, whatever. So then later on, her name's Verity, so super hard to remember because it's unique, but it's unique, so it's easy to remember, and... Um, I would see her walking by to class and be like, hey, Verity. And she like, hey, random guy that bought me ice cream that I can't remember your name. <laughs> so uh, it was funny. The story I tell in my head versus what she tells, <laughs> it was so different. But anyway, I tricked her. And so here we are with four kids later on. Um, eventually got into sales because I wanted to be better at public speaking and use my engineering degree in a kind of different manner. I don't know if I didn't really necessarily want to be at the desk all the time. So um, I co-opted MIAG Power. And then eventually made it into working for uh, uh, J- TTC, JDS Uniface, selling test sets across the Southeast. And that's because of all the driving, I got into listening to books, found, because um, of my dad, he suggested it, found uh, Stephen Covey and the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and all these guys as I drove around listening to books on tape. And they literally were on tape, cassette tape. Um, <clears throat> I also bought my first um, Audible uh, subscription. So I started listening in to an on, uh, t- to them on, on on MP3s, which back then it was super weird to get it to work. Now, I mean, it's so easy. It's crazy how fast things have changed. But found them. Found Rich Dad Poor Dad. This is this guy. I think I don't know if he said it, but in my head he said it. Any idiot can be a landlord. I'm like, hey, I'm an idiot. I could be a landlord. So we started down that track. My wife and I. Of course, we were dual engineers. Um, de- degrees with uh, no children for a while, so that helps out. And of course, sales. If you if you're a rainmaker, you get paid well. But anyway, so that's how we jumped into oops, becoming a landlord. So if you're ever interested in that, let me know. I'm happy to talk landlording. My biggest advice is to buy smart and figure out you know your strategy. If you're 50, I don't think landlording is really the best place to go because usually it's got a longer time horizon. But there you go. And then um, something else that we did for a very long time was play flag football. And this is where I started getting interested in CrossFit. So I was playing flag football. That was pretty much my uh, athletic and um, fitness outlet. Um, My college buddies, we all played together and then we stayed together in in a league in Tucker. And then as some of us, I guess, got old and fat, we would leave, but new brothers would graduate and they would join us. So we played for a very long time together and I was a rusher. So basically just stood on the line. They said, hi, can I try to pull the quarterback's flags? And thanks to wrestling and just being small, small and nimble. Fortunately, strength is my weakness, but endurance and recovery is good for me. Um, I was able to pull a lot of flags at around 30, 32. I realized, um, I am missing every single flag. What the heck is happening? So I knew something was changing inside of me at that time I got introduced into um, adventure racing. And so I, uh, who was it? Um, a co-worker, oh man, Michael Linton. He said, Hey, there's this thing. He's a, he was a, uh, he worked for, I think Siemens or Cisco or one of those, um, 
he said, hey, there's this thing called adventure racing where basically you're in a mountain bike, a canoe, and running around the woods with a topo map and a compass. It's awesome. You should do it. And I thought, okay, let me go research this. So I did. I found a race. Uh, Brad McDonald, a longtime member and neighbor of mine, I said, hey, let's do this thing called adventure racing. We're going to go race for 24 hours. And he goes, hmm, I'm in. I thought, what the heck? That's awesome. So we didn't do the 24-hour race. We did, I think, an eight or six-hour race first, but eventually got to a 24-hour race. So basically, you're in the woods for 24 hours, no sleeping, just go. There's, I think, five or six of us uh, looking to do or going to do the Swamp Fox Adventure Race on March 18th. Should be pretty fun, and I'll do a little video log of that. <clears throat> so in that time frame, traveling, doing adventure racing, I would come home. I think, I don't know how many kids we had at the time, probably four, and um, Verity at one point said, man, you're really messing up my routine. I need you to go out of town again. I'm like, what? So I knew something was wrong with that, so I needed to come up with a way to not be out of town so much and, and create home routine. So sales is great for pay, but they do want you to travel and be gone. And then the other part was um, when I'd come home and I knew I want to do these adventure races, I'd come home and then go run and bike for two or three hours. So she's like, really? You just got here and you're not even helpful, just whatever. And yep, that was bad on me. So I needed to come up with a different way to exercise. Along come Eric Richards and he says, Andy, there's this workout. You put in your general information into a website that's on the internet, quote, because what was that? And um, it'll tell you a specific workout. That's not what he said, but that's what I thought he said. And so one day I finally was like, whatever, I'll just try this CrossFit thing out. I went on the website and there was not a specific workout for me. It was one workout for everyone. I thought, huh, I'll try it. I think the very first workout I did was Murph. And um, eventually Justin the Breck came down into my basement and we were like doing pull-ups on a uh, a plumber's pipe across an unfinished door jam. And for, um, what else were we doing? We're doing kettlebell swings with, um, half full fertilizer bags. (laughs) So it was really a bad environment, but we were trying to do whatever it was, right? This CrossFit thing. And, um, so eventually he says, Hey, let's start, um, a gym. I'm like, sure. It sounds good. A place for us to actually have gear and stuff. So, Eric, Shane, and Wes and I uh, started uh, uh, CrossFit Garage. Um, They were the uh, initial, I guess, folks. And they said, hey, we need one more person for whatever reason. And like, Andy, come here. And so I guess fast forward to today, I'm the only one doing this. And it was kind of funny. Years ago, we said, well, what is our body going to look like in 15 years of CrossFit? Will our joints be destroyed? Because no one had long-term data points on this. And I've been doing this since 2007. And I'm fine. So um, I I guess I should get together with the other guys and ask them how they're feeling because they don't really do CrossFit anymore. Uh, Maybe one of them does sort of, but yeah, I'm good. I actually still hit some PRs here and there and all my joints are good. I can stand up, sit down. I'm very active. My very sticky Y, which I tell people all the time, if you want to do this, be healthy and fit or any goal, really, you need to have a sticky Y. And my sticky Y is I want to be able to coach my kids' kids in soccer or whatever sport. Soccer is what I know, but I mean, I can coach other stuff, I'm sure. So what does that look like? I probably don't need to be doing muscle ups and I probably don't need to have a one rep max back squat of whatever, but I certainly need to be able to move and get up and down and and, and have capacity, right? So um, as we've said before, the needs of your grandparents in the Olympic athlete don't differ in kind, they just differ in degree. So both everyone needs to stand up, sit down, move left and right and all that. The Olympic athlete, in this case, I'm thinking like a, a downhill skier, skier, he just needs to be able to sit in that <laughs> that skied position uh, with a lot more intensity than our grandparents. So again, degree, not kind. So this is where CrossFit comes in. All right, so then we got into um, doing competitions because uh, CrossFit did the uh, first event, I think it was in 2007, out in uh, at uh, Dave Castro's family farm, and then eventually... Um, Eric had the idea, let's do the Garage Games, an event out here on the East Coast. And we're like, yeah, let's do that. So here's the Garage Games. It still exists. And there's um, events. Let's actually go in here and see this. I haven't really... South Central. So there's a Masters Tour. So online, yeah, it's a couple of things. So there's, oh, yeah, the uh, Us First Them or, or X's and Y's. So there was a whole lot of stuff. We had a, some pretty interesting times. The worldwide Watt, oh, that's, I guess maybe they're not doing as much anymore. 2020, juniors. So there's some events out there. I should probably ask them about this. Worldwide Watt. Yeah, we haven't 
done those in a long time. So that was something we used to do gym resolutions. But anyway, I did a lot of events. One event was in the woodlands. There's the park in the back and we did a massive event back there. I think we ended up with like 1200 competitors. And I think that is the day I got burnt out from events. And I just don't really care for them anymore. It's just too crazy. And there's too many, I would say 90% of it is awesome. And then that one person comes along and just you know, flame throws the whole thing. You're like, really? Look, here's your money back. Just leave. So I just, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So games and events were pretty big for a long time. We split companies. So those guys still, um, own the garage games and CrossFit silos and other stuff and bridge mill, which actually I don't know if there's none of them are still around, but, and I picked up the gym. So, uh, the gym is, uh, mine to win or lose at. So you guys tell me, right? All right, next thing there. Oh, this is kind of funny. So this is back in when YouTube was actually becoming a thing. So 13 years ago, almost 4,000 views of me doing swing and kipping pull-ups because that was like new and different. And they're like, how do you do that? So we made a video and it's time. It's not a great video and you can see a rig. <laughs> so shaking oh. that and my hands slip off the bar. But <laughs> anyway, um, funny stuff. So yeah, I, I should probably find more videos of what the old gym looks like. It always makes me laugh when people are like, wow, uh, there's no space in the current gym. I'm like, yeah, you have no idea what we came from. Anyway, I have got uh, four kids. Uh, two of them are still at Fellowship Christian. Uh, Olivia is becoming a chemical engineer at Auburn University. Evan uh, is becoming a computer science scientist, computer whatever. He's getting a major in computer science at UGA. And, um, uh, other things that I've done, I've do dove deep into coaching for soccer as well. I've got my C license, which, um, it just means that I'm, I guess, technically I'm, I'm licensed and approved to coach club at, I think U 16 and down, but we, we got away from that. So I haven't done it in a while, although I really enjoy coaching kids. So I hate coaching rec soccer because the kids don't want to be there. At least at club soccer, there's a higher probability that the kids wanted to be there. And to see some of the kids excel was phenomenal. And man, I could coach that all day. Like coaching you guys at the gym, you want to be there. You literally pay to be there. So it's awesome. I love coaching you. Coaching people who don't want to listen, it's that's no fun at all. It's like, I mean, you, what is it? The proximity bias? Uh, you can't coach people or you know tell people things that are important that are too close to you. So that's why when you tell your kids something and then uh, the the coach says the exact same thing, they're like, wow, coach so-and-so said this. You're like, dang it, I said that. And it's just because, the, you know, that's what it is, proximity bias. There's actually a cool, okay, let me back up. This is also me. I love, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts and books. I usually listen at times two speed. I can consume material with my um, auditorially very easy. And I just love it. So anytime I'm sitting, driving, doing, choring, whatever, I'm listening to something, which is probably why I like doing videos and podcasts, whatever. But um, <laughs> I suppose negatively, I'm very tangential, just like right now, and I get into various stories. So <laughs> if you like tangents, then yay, because we'll get along great. But um, uh, anyway, so I, I listen to a lot of material. I, I like um, hmm, mindset or philosophy. So the idea of, of like the prisoner's dilemma or game theory, I love that. Or Occam's razor, like, what is that? And what does that mean? And how does it apply? Or what's the other um, one? Hmm. Sophie's choice, right? I mean, those, I guess, philosophies. So I don't know what they would be called, but I love that stuff. Like they have mapped us out. They know what to call it. I love that. Um, anyway, <clears throat> Murphy's Law. Come on, everyone knows Murphy's Law, but that's more out of more fun. Anyway, some other things that I'm into currently right now is uh, cryptocurrency. Actually, not cryptocurrency at all. I'm into Bitcoin. So uh, I have learned enough that um, cryptocurrency is one thing. Bitcoin is something totally different. Um, if you're interested or want to know, uh, talk to me, but I would not invest in anything else besides Bitcoin. All the other stuff is trash. Uh, change my mind, right? Let's see. I am, as most of you know, into chickens and ducks. I don't really care for the ducks, but I have chickens. Okay, so the big thing is uh, chickens in your backyard. We've been doing this for, I don't know, since 2015 or something. And we got chickens all over the place. So let me call them in and I'll show you some chickens. 
Hey chickens, what's up? And I throw out some seeds. And you're gonna see them all go to the seeds. Hey guys, what's up? So anyway, you can train chickens sort of. Um, food is a mighty big trainer. And um, I have a lot of chickens. I, <laughs> I am trying to defeat Mother Nature. And I have tried in many forms and fashion, and I cannot. So what I have determined is the McCann Farm, which really isn't a farm at all, but the McCann Farm is actually a buffet for hawks and coyotes. And I just have to understand that that's the price of doing business. So we have a lot of chickens now because I was trying to outbreed Mother Nature. I think last year we made it through winter and only had, I think, maybe three or five chickens going into the spring. So I started rehatching everybody and um, I think we hatched about 100 chickens, and now we've got about 30 again. So Mother Nature is a beast. And if you notice in this picture, so, well, if you're on the podcast, you can't see the picture. But let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 chickens in this picture, and oh, 16, there's one on the bottom left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five of those chickens are not black, and... One, two. Two of those chickens are not black or brown, and one chicken is, so one of them is a zebra kind of stripy color. So there's only one chicken that is white with some brown, and um, basically Mother Nature picks off anything that's not a really dark chicken. I think it's because crows and hawks fight. So you'll see hawks picking at crows to get them away from, I guess, nests. I don't know what they do. Maybe they're kill. I don't know. And so my guess is um, the darker colored chickens scare the hawks a bit. And so, yeah, they don't really come out. Anyway, so I'm into that. And if you guys ever want to uh, uh, learn, grow, try, whatever with chickens, you know, let me know. I do eventually. You can buy my eggs, not buy them. You can donate to the McCann farm and I will give you eggs. So I do not sell them, but you can donate to the farm and then Weirdly, with your donation comes a, uh, a box of eggs. <laughs> so <laughs> um, any amount is fine. If you want to donate 20 bucks, that is awesome. If you want to donate five bucks, um, tears, because these <laughs> these eggs are probably worth $100 a piece because this is an expensive operation. Anyway, it's what I'm into. Uh, I suppose you could say as I get older, I see the value of living a life where you have redundancy or you have the, you know, you can live a good life when I'll, I'll, I'll quote one of my favorite podcasts from Jack Spierko, the survival podcast. He helps you live a good life when times are bad or even if they're not right. So these things, having chickens, I mean, I don't know, maybe the, the zombies come great. I have some meat. Otherwise I'm eating healthy eggs, right? I know exactly. I'm eating an egg that comes from a chicken at my property. Not only that, I know what they're fed and I just started feeding them, making my own feed for them. So I know what they're eating, mostly insects, safe for your range and other organic -y whatevers. And so if you don't want corn or soy or whatever, then yeah, you've got it. So eat healthy, do things that move the needle forward for your own independence and health like Bitcoin. Why would you get into that? I mean, it's like silver or gold. Why would you buy silver or gold? And I know some people are like, you should never do that. Great. Good for you. Don't. <laughs> it's something that I'm interested in. Do the things you're interested in, right? But <clears throat> all of this to say, if you want to be productive into your 90s, then find, create goals and do daily work towards it. It's not that hard. Just take a step, a small step, right? Create wins, create small wins. It's just, I don't know. Okay, so we are... 29 minutes in, and I'm going to go into programming. I'm going to do a um, two things. The first thing I'm going to do is kind of tell you what I'm doing to program for the future because we are going to move away from um, the idea I had was if we did enough workouts from last year that we could kind of compare results, then that would be fun. We'd have more PRs. But what I didn't consider is is creating a bipolar scenario where, hey, I beat it. Yay. Hey, I didn't beat it. Boo. So now I've created a scenario of highs and lows. And that is not the intent. And nor was the intent to create every day as a test day. So I have done messed up, a, a Ron. And I'm changing that. So here's what I want to do. I am using a spreadsheet right now because I like to see it. I'll probably, uh, I'm going to go probably old school and buy a, like a one year pad and then start writing this down because I just like to see things and be able to grab it all. Anyway, 
So I think we're programmed up through um, right here through uh, May. I'm sorry, May. <laughs> All of March. And then we start over and it's my stuff beginning in April. So in April and May, you're going to see a very, maybe not very different, but you're going to see a different style. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I have got some, and this is two days in and my rough draft. So a lot of this is probably going to change, but I have got my skill sets that I want to teach people that have said, people have said, I want pull-ups, double unders, handstand push-ups, handstand walks. I want to use the GHD. I want to rope climb. Why don't we do dips? Dang it. There's muscle ups in the open. Why aren't we doing that? Help me with toes to bar. What about LSIT? So these are things that we want to practice and actually LSIT shouldn't be there. That is not something you really need to practice, but these are skill sets. Almost all of them revolve around the kip. So we're going to teach that. Um, I want a 5K or 10K day because you need that extreme long. So I'm going to hide it somewhere. And then we've got um, some lifts. And shouldn't we be doing rem- one rep maxes? Yes and no. I am not a huge fan of the one rep max. It's just something cool to put on there. But it doesn't move the needle as much as time under tension or the loading and the volume. And it also, for the risk reward, the risk of catastrophic failure at a one rep max is way greater than doing a three rep max. So a three rep max, hey man, I may bail on the third one, but the second one I'm probably going to get. And um, I would love it if people were learning to lift without aids. So if you can only lift it with a belt, don't belt. Let's I- increase our core, Right. So anyway, we're going to change it a little bit. We're doing doing more three rep maxes. I mean, if you're feeling it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do a one rep max today. I mean, that is totally fine if that's what you want to do. But I'm not going to make you do that, right? Um, uh, we are going to aim for this. So you're going to see three days or three opportunities of building and then um, – or two days of building and then a one rep max. You'll also find – percent lifts in the workout. So for example, let me just take you through one of these. So where are we? So front squat, that's actually the old program. Okay. So So I got a, actually, I'll just start right here. So here's a Monday, the 10th. We're going to do some overhead squats. Um, It's three sets of five plus B. What the hell? What What does that mean? So the goal is to do three sets and to hit five, and on the last set, do more, so the plus, and B, building. So do three sets, B, building, and on the last one, do more. So I guess in pro bring language, you could do like I, you know, C++ or I++, whatever. It's just add one more. So maybe it's not five, maybe you get six or seven, but this is what the way it creates or finds your one rep estimated one rep max is Brzezinski's equation. So by a, by being able to do more, it's going to create better percentages for you when you go to these workouts, right? So we've just been doing deadlifts. Let's see over here, we did a deadlift, one rep max will be in February. <clears throat> so everyone should have a pretty decent 55% of your one rep max. So that'll be in there. Be So if you, let me back up. So tangent, tangential and too fast. So Monday would be an overhead squat learning day. Let's teach that. Let's get in that lower movement. Pretty much everyone struggles with getting into a deep, correct squat with the bar overhead. Then the workout is going to have overhead squats and running. So we just learned it. Now let's put it in there. It's light. I'll do an altered one. So it'll be even lighter if you need it. Maybe I'll even do 55% of your one rep max um, and it'll build off these percentages. But that's the idea is is we learned it. Now we're going to use it. Then over here on Tuesday, we've got let's start on handstands. So there's Handstand holds, there's taps, there's push-ups, and there's walk. And we want to progress. And you'll see that's going to happen Tuesday, and it's going to happen Wednesday. And then um, I think somewhere there's going to be ill. And then on Friday, it'll actually be in the workout. So we'll practice those things. So <clears throat> on Tuesday, when we start learning that, we'll probably start with hands, uh, handstand holds. Or I will let people pick based on where they're at so that you can grow. So the only way to get better at a skilled movement, the stuff that I showed you on this this side, is to practice these skills. You have to put time in. We just don't have them come up enough. So I've picked a few that you guys have mentioned. I said, yeah, these are high skill. Let's let's drill into them. Also, you have your some main lifts. I know there's some others, but just these are the ones that were on my chart at the time. Again, this this whole spreadsheet is like two days old, so it's going to change a lot. But it gets me thinking. I got two months to, uh, uh, you know, make it as close to what I want as I can. And then, of course, no, as Mike Tyson said, no plan survives getting punched in the face. And uh, or military people say no plan survives first contact with the enemy. Not that you're the enemy, but you know the workout, right? So we also said we want to do some uh, stones. So you're going to see. <clears throat> 
uh, right here, we got more handstands, but we should have just come off a, a long session with uh, Mute Sport, learning a double under. So I'm going to get double unders back in there. So we're going to do some stones and double unders. So something outside. I'll probably put something inside as well because I don't want the stones coming in, but I need you to come in to the gym. Well, I guess you could do your double unders outside, but it ruins your rope if you double under on concrete. Okay, so we just did some overhead squat. Now we're going to have that overhead squat probably back. Oh, Nancy. Hmm. Yep. See, I already found a problem. I don't want to do that. Hmm. I might have to change that one. Nope. Okay. I'll go back and change that. See, these are the things I got to go look at. But anyway, this is what I'm talking about is having those things come up and then actually put them in the workout. So let's look at the next week we have got, so clean's coming. So you have clean building and then where is it again? You have clean and then there'll be a three max, three max clean and then there'll be clean work. <laughs> in the workouts, you can start practicing that as well. So the randomness or variedness of the workouts are going to be a little bit more intentional. The combinations will be definitely varied as much as creativity allows, but I want to practice these things so we get better. If we never see a Turkish get up again, then you're not going to get better at it. I got to put it in there somewhere and have it come multiple times. So if you want to get better, let's see, what, what was I going with this one? So like dips, we got dips on Tuesday, dips on Thursday, and then dips in the workout. So we've been able to practice them and then we're on. So on this one, on the, let's say Thursday, well, wait a minute, we have handstand what? Well, we just did a whole week of handstand work. Let's put it back in the workout, right? So um, other ones on there, we um, have, <clears throat> where's the rope climb? Oh, so we have the uh, like overhead squat, the rear at max, and then we're going to teach some rope climb. Um, probably do another short workout with uh, the rope, or maybe without, and then um, more rope climb work, and then, hey, here's a rope climb workout. So it's going to s make a lot more sense in terms of gaining the skill set that you need if you just do rope climb once, and then we come back a month later. <sighs> we have to restart. So we're going to at least try a week and then pepper it in um, throughout the rest of the two months. And then once, what is that? That leads us up to the summer and I'll probably do something different in the summer. I like the idea of percent lifts. I'm going to toy with them in here, <clears throat> but maybe we'll dive deeper into that. Uh, range of motion is huge. Flexibility is huge. I do want everyone rolling again. So I'm probably going to shorten things up a little bit so that we actually have time to roll, um, afterwards. Um, so the focus is going to be, yes, I'm going to lift still heavy. That's I know you guys like it. That's strength bias CrossFit, not a fan of mine, but it does let us teach it. So yes, let's do it. The thing I really want to dive into is going to be these skills and how do I teach you to be better at the skills? Well, we've got to put time into it. So that's going to be the focus. Okay. Now on to actual programming for the, that coming up week. So this is 38 minutes in. I have to put two marks in here to remind myself <laughs> where we did this. Okay. So, um, Monday, the 27th, it is a uh, one rep max de deadlift. So everything, the important thing is that deadlift. I hope that people stay here the entire time and never come off the deadlift. Stay there, do the deadlift, make it your entire time. It should take 60 minutes to really get in. <clears throat> it should take more than that, but we have 60 minutes to get a one rep max deadlift. I'm not a huge fan of one rep max. I will not be doing a one rep max deadlift. I will probably uh, do uh, probably like five sets of 10. <laughs> My back just does not like it. Then we've got the workout. So I will do the workout. Those that want to prioritize the lift, do not do the workout. Skip it. So we're trying to hit around 12 minutes. What does that look like? I will do DT couplet scaled because I cannot move that um, weight uh, DT or DT chief couplet. It's just too dang heavy for me. So let um, me click on it so you can see it. So it's 155 for guys, 105 for girls. <clears throat> I will do DT, uh, DT chief couplet scaled at 95 pounds. And I might, uh, yeah, I'll probably do 95 pounds. I think that's what I did last time. So you want to scale to hit around 12 minutes and then cool down and stretch. Tuesday, the 28th, um, we got, ooh, with a bike. I like this one. So Echo Vision. There is a scaled option. Echo Vision is complete 100 calories or 80 calories for girls. And then every minute, do three burpees. So <laughs> at the end, it seems like you never get to rest and the burpees are always coming. And you have to just make a decision. Like, am I, I'm just going to sit on the spike and just catch my breath. <laughs> 
this one is so deceptive. And um, yeah, it's one of my favorite. Everyone hates burpees. I just say I love burpees. I don't, but I, I just say it enough that eventually I do. And uh, there is a scaled version, <clears throat> which is 60 calories and 48 calories. So you can get through it a little bit faster. The idea is that we're trying to hit up around the 10 minute mark. CrossFit, the ideal time domain is around 12 minutes. <clears throat> the ideal loading is moderate. The reason is I can keep up a ten- intensity. So you're going to see workouts <clears throat> in the eight to 14 minute time domain is kind of like it's sweet spot. And it's all about intensity. The independent variable that has led to more change and uh, neurological adaptation <clears throat> than anything else. So intensity is what we want to go for. Once we've mastered form and once we master the weight, then we can move it with intensity. All right. And the course of cool down, make sure you stretch. Uh, on Wednesday, <clears throat> we have a 15 minute AMRAP, so as many rounds as possible in 15 minutes, 200 meter run, uh, 10 pull-ups, 10 front squats at 115 pounds. So I think it'd be more interesting and more challenging to say, hey, the front squats are 55% of your one rep max because everyone's front squats a little bit different. Then it's going to push you and challenge us all in the same capacity. Some of you guys that have a huge front squat, you're like, yeah, 115, that ain't nothing. I'm going to crush it, right? So yeah, maybe you do 135 as an RX plus, but still that may be nothing to you, right? So the idea of the workout is lost because we've nailed down the specific weight, right? So we're going to be going for 15 minutes anyway. Nobody can stop that. Uh, Of course, your intensity will be variable based on how tired you get. Now, we do have the scaled version as well. So if you're brand new, I would totally just run right into the scaled. Um, It's a little shorter on the run. We got ring rows and front squats. Now, if you're doing this scaled, let's say... The, like when should you, when should you choose which? Here's an easy one. I cannot do pull-ups. I'm going to scale the pull-ups anyway. Okay, well, the scaled version of this is ring rows. Can you do ring rows? Yes. But 75 pounds is too light for me. I want to do 115. Totally fine. Do the scaled version, click Rx, and put a note in there that you did 115. You can always scale up a workout. That's not a big deal, right? Scale up on a workout. Totally fine. <clears throat> that gives you an Rx in this, and it can be tracked. If you care about this, weirdly, after these last, what, two months, I'm caring less and less about tracking and I'm caring more and more about movement. Um, of course, the open throws me completely off, but yeah. So in April and May, many of those workouts will never repeat. It's going to just be um, a one and done. So you won't be able to track it. The thing you will be tracking is your progress in the, hmm, I should probably put that in there then. I'm about to put a bright spot back in there so you can know what you're doing on the pull-up. The whole track is, did I get that? Actually, I should probably make a whole thing for you guys to write down, did I make it? What are my goals and did I get there for those movements? Um, I'm going to forget that, but hopefully I don't. Uh, then <laughs> we've got some deloaded shoulder press on, uh, what is that, uh, Thursday. Of course, the Open's coming, so the workout's going to be somewhat somewhat subdued. <clears throat> there is some toes to bar. I might suggest not doing the toes to bar um, and doing the sit-ups instead just because it might be in the Open workout. You just don't know, and you don't want to burn your hands out. So at 10 toes to bar, <sighs> yeah, maybe that's okay. I think it's every minute on the minute. Hmm. I might do four, three, and three and still do toes to bar just to kind of keep that muscle group there. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just the open throws everything off. Anyway, there is the programming. This time I got it right. If you want to be interviewed, if you want a skill to be taught, if you have questions for me, you'd like me to cover simply email me Andy at CrossFitGarage.com. Yeah, I know. Super hard email to memorize. But thank you guys all for listening and being part of the community. If you are a non-member and you're listening to this and you're interested and you're a little nervous, yeah, just give us a call. We have a literally something called a no sweat intro. You're not going to sweat and it's super cake, right? There's just don't sweat about it. It's super easy. If you just if you don't even live near us and you just need advice or help, yeah, give me a call or text or email or whatever. I'm happy to help you. All right, y'all be good. Yeah. <laughs>